cockatoo there on the right that's making that strange noise. That's a baby. Doesn't look very much like a baby, does it? It's the same size as its parent on the left. But he's asking for food. Now he's too young to eat seed. His parents need to eat and regurgitate a mush into his beak. So there's no point in me putting food out for him. He's unable to eat it. But as you know, I do feed the adults. So they will eat the seed and then go and feed their baby. He's saying, please dad, feed me. I'm hungry. I don't know that dad's got any food for you though. I'll have to put some seed out. And as a child, they go on and on and on until they get what they want. <laughs> You're bringing him over towards me, are you? He says, move over. All right, I'll go and put some seed out so your father can eat it and then feed you. All right, okay, bye. G'day guys, welcome back. Right, so I've got my colors all mixed up. You saw the video before, I showed you how I mixed my pouring medium for the cloud, Floetrol, Liquitex, pouring medium and water, and then how I mixed that pouring medium with my Liquitex Basics. So watch that video. Uh, the only thing I did change was the white I noticed was too thin. Um, I actually had to add more white, so it's one-to-one -one pouring medium to the white flow acrylic. Uh, so the colours are the Liquitex Basics Light Blue Permanent. I have Copper. Uh, bright Aqua Green. Thalo Blue, which is this one. And then I added Thalo Blue with a touch of black to get the navy because this phthalo blue has got a little bit of the deco art satin enamel. They've all got that in them. Um, again, if you saw the previous video, you'll know I mixed about a quarter of this to the Liquitex Basics to help us get some beautiful cells today. Right, that's what we're going for. No silicone in this pour. Right, oh, let's get going. I think I've got about 480 grams of mixed paint. They've been sitting just a bit and they've thickened up just a touch, which is good because they looked a little on the thin side when I showed you last. They're not supposed to really make a mound, but you don't want them to go straight in either. You don't want the paint to drop straight in and make like that little, you know how raindrops when they hit water make that little indentation? You don't want it to make an indentation. You want it to actually just run straight back in without leaving a mound and without leaving a little dent. So that's it there. Thank you, ducks. If you don't have that, Add a little bit more paint. If you think it's too thin, add a little bit more paint. If you think it's too thick, it's leaving a mound, add a bit more pouring medium or a little bit more water. So it just depends on what brand of paint you're using. So in goes the navy. I should keep a little bit of that. Oh, there's touch left just in case I need some for the corners. I don't think I'll need all this paint, so I'm not going to really use all of it, I think. In with the light blue. And I'm just alternating light, dark, light, light, dark. In with the medium blue. My copper. And this greeny colour. And 
then the white. And I think I'm going to pull the white in from up high so it kind of sinks down. So I want the white to go through all the different layers to create our cloudiness. I want clouds, literally white fluffy clouds. Okay, how much paint have we got? Yeah, about 480. Okay, so this is a 40 by 50 centimeter canvas, uh, 16 by 20 inch. And I'm just going to pour into the middle. Just a dirty pour. Here comes the blue. Can't really see much of the white, but I guess it's in there. It's mixing in with the other colours. My husband's just started up the ride on lawnmower. It's Sunday today and he's back from, from work for the week. There's always jobs to be done around the place when you're on acreage. the drip. Okay, let's do some torching, pop those bubbles. So I poured that out pretty fast, eh? so it's quite, quite bubbly. Pop the bubbles. And then I think I just wanted to sit for a few minutes. if I need to fill in the corners, but I want to be able to stretch this out. So you've got to just be careful that your paint's not too thin um, because then your, your cell effects will just get too big. You know, they might end up like this, which is massive. I prefer them to be smaller and more round. Um, I'm not sure what else is going to happen, if anything else is going to pop up. I think I might just put the video on pause just for five minutes and uh, come back. I want, hopefully, hopefully there'll be um, some action popping up and I don't want to rush it. See, if I can get the little cells and things to come up now to form, when I start tilting and stretching, then obviously they're going to grow and I'm going to have some bigger cells. So I'm just going to give it five minutes and I'll be back. So it doesn't look as if it's done a whole lot in about 15 minutes or so. So I'll just uh, start stretching it and see what happens, hey? Uh, I like that. So we'll do that last. Let's go over this corner here first. Stretch it out. Don't think I'm going to go over the corner just yet. Come back. I'll see what it looks like first. I can always either fill those in with another contrasting colour or keep stretching but we'll just see how it goes with the first stretch to each corner first so back to the middle down to this corner I don't want to go too fast because I don't want to break these cells that I've got here whether or not you can call them cells I don't know they're cloud formations, aren't they? Cells, I think, of more perfectly round, colours within colours, rings around them. So I don't know that these are true cells. Actually, I don't want to break this up. I might have to move this first. Just 
go off to this corner first and see what those little cells <laughs> are going to do, little formations. I, I personally don't like the whole canvas to be filled in these white blobs, the clouds. I like a little bit of interest, a little bit of background. Um, yeah, not just the whole thing covered. And the way to do that is to not have your paint too thin. So back again, and then off to the next corner. The cells seem to be holding their shape, which is good. If your mix is too thin, they won't hold their shape. They'll just become really wobbly and loose looking. Okay, right, so we've gone to each corner. Now where? Well, we still want to stretch everything out a bit more, hey? So we'll go again to each corner and actually go over the corner this time or pretty much over the corner back. See what happens when you overstretch them though, these, they, they lose that little, you know, that nice round shape, but you do kind of have to stretch everything for more cells and little formations to, to come up. Now I'm going to torch it again, to see if I can pop any more bubbles now that I've moved the paint around. white dots appearing from where the bubbles have been popped so whether or not they turn into cells as well I'm not sure okay so that corner's done I don't really know if I want to go down there I'll come over here next because it's very white over here so I don't mind if I lose some of that mm, don't want to lose it all though I'm going to keep that little bit of blue on the edge there Get rid of some of this so if I take the paint down a bit and then I can take some of that off you just need to put the weight of the paint where you want it to go and then we can come around to this corner at the same time and over and back okay let's fix that corner up Bit of floss that's green, that's not going to work. I want some blue on that corner. Not a lot of the green's shown through, has it? Not really. I'm just going to center that a little bit more. Mm hmm. Oh, which colour is this? Let's pop a little bit of that just there for now. Hopefully that side's covered. I can't really see. I'll check it later. Oh, I'm loving this. What's happening up here? It's the green coming through. Might have to actually take some of that white off. But I need to get down here next. So let's bring the paint back to the middle. And get it moving to that corner. See, as I'm stretching the paint out, tilting the canvas, more little formations are popping up. 
which is nice and that can actually go right over to be fine I'm just not that happy with all this white here I really like what's happening with the rest of the, the canvas it's really really pretty I love it very happy with it just not so sure about this big block of white here so I think I'm gonna to have to take that off okay, part of it off anyway I don't want to ruin everything else let's just take that side off and see if that helps with the, the overall look of it now I've only got that one stripe having it like that really bugged me how's that looking these are so gorgeous these are actually proper cells they have got one, two, three colours in them. I'll take you down for a close-up later on, but they are really pretty, those cells. I will even call them cells. Torch again. Popping bubbles, bringing up more cells. know about that white line I kind of like the blue on the corner there if I take that off I'm going to end up with a white corner because this this white will just move down and I'll just have a white corner so I don't really want that and if I do move that down the, this white's just going to end up stretching down and it's still going to be a white corner so I might just see if I can open these out a little bit. See, they're quite elongated. See if I can just open them out just a touch. Let me move this down a little bit and see if I can get some more movement happening, some more cells happening. Because the more I stretch this out, the more will pop up. It's going to take that one big blob off. And there it goes. And then come back. And just by moving that canvas up and then back again, we'll get more formations popping up. See, these have all stretched out now, these little cells. I'll torch that again. As I said earlier, I'm not one of these people that just wants the whole canvas just filled in these huge big you know clouds it's, it's not what I'm after I like some of the big ones which I've got and then we've got some of the smaller ones we've got that beautiful dark section in the middle with I don't know what that is it's just <laughs> it's just an interesting little formation in it uh, yeah so happy with that and I think I will just leave that because the more that I I know I can tilt it a little bit more, but these may all start overstretching. I'll just see what happens if I try and push those down. Because see how, that's, how long they are? If I try and squish them up a little bit, I don't know if I can, but let's just see. It's going to take a while for me to get that paint to go all the way down there no it's still not there i have to bring it back i need to move the weight of the paint where i want it to go before i start moving it mm, i don't think it's really going to to help not really I might wreck it. I think I'm, I'll just leave it. I'm really happy with it. I'm <laughs> really, really happy with it. It's so glacial. Looks like, you know, little bits of ice have broken off and are moving through the ocean. It's so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm happy with that. Try not to touch it. And in fact, over the next 
10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, um, it, it'll change. So I'll just leave it like that and uh, I'll pop the video on pause and I'll come back to you and we'll see what happens, see if anything changes. These little cells down here are so gorgeous. If I can get my gloves off, oh, I'll just have to wrap those. There's only so many times you can take your gloves on and off. And my husband's making an awful racket with the mower, so I'll be back. Okay, guys, so it's about oh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And uh, we've had a little bit more happen, which is good. It's looking really pretty, and I'm so, so happy that I haven't lost all the, the background. Hopefully it'll stay like this. I'm going to take you down and show you real quick before my husband comes back around the corner with his ride on mower and makes another racket. Okay. So we have got, obviously we've got those really big billowing cloudy cells in the white. And I think that's the artist loft that's doing that. Um, the other cells seem to be smaller. Um, yeah, it's just those those white ones that have turned so huge and that's the only artist loft that I used was the white so I'm thinking that that's what's done that. But aren't they so pretty? Little white ones. There are little white ones as well but then it's the bigger white ones. I think those are probably from when I originally poured they were quite large and then I tilted and so they've they've grown and then down here the green cells there's a few little green ones that are popping up this isn't my favorite corner but I'm still glad that I've kept that little bit of blue just on the end there my favourite, favourite, I guess, would be over here where we've got these tiny little green cells that have popped through. And then over here, the white against that dark blue. And I'm so, so happy that I've kept that dark centre with that strange little wavy formation in the middle. That was what came out of the cup last. That little sort of weird formation and it's really pretty so there you go that's from my side my perspective hopefully you've enjoyed that video and have learnt something so have a go at this uh, you don't even need to have this uh, satin enamel paint I've done other videos you can look back through YouTube videos I've done others like this not as good admittedly um, but without the enamel paint and it's worked just with Floetrol and again just with Floetrol and pouring medium but definitely this Deco Art Satin Enamel is the bomb when it comes to these sort of cloudy effects so pretty okay I'm going to leave it at that I've got to get ready to go out, going out to the Thai restaurant with my parents and my hubby for dinner this evening, so pack up, clean up and go and get ready. So uh, I'll see you for the next pour, I have something, a bit of a surprise for you for the next pour, so I'll see you then, bye for now.